Wow. It's like a, okay. It's, it's, it's did a you process. ever? Did you ever stop taking hormones, or are you still taking them to the? Um, as of now, it's yeah. not something that I have to do every week. I don't take them every week now. Um, I do still take them, but it's not as frequently as I used to when I was younger because okay. I I feel like I have developed into the femininity that I have, you know, grown to be. I don't think it's any more feminine than I can go, to be honest. But um, yeah, I still take it here and there. I did take a break from it because I was tired of shooting myself in the butt cheek with a shot. So it was just like, all right, I'm at where I want to be. Like That's how I kind of looked at it. I'm at where I want to be now. So it's like, do I really have to take it like that? They say you're supposed to continue to take your hormone therapy your whole entire life. But um, me, I feel like I did overload. Like I was, I think at one point I was actually um, overdosing with hormones because I remember when I had to, when I started going to the clinic, the health clinic, the, you know, the nurse and whoever I was seeing, I think she said that she's like, my hormone level was so high, the estrogen. She was like, you got to kind of stop taking that as much because I was taking pills too. I found pills to take and the shot. So I was so, so are the pill or the pills or the pills are they the, hormones as well? Mm -hmm. The pills they're called I'm gonna tell you the name of it. So the hormone shot, they're called extradal or spiralactone. Spiralactone are the pills which are testosterone blockers. And mm -hmm. they have another um another um name that some people use. I can't think of the name of it. It was estradiol and um and another liquid form name. But I was taking um both. So with the testosterone blocker, they kind of like stopped a lot of things. Like, you know, as a male, you know, you know how you might get a little horny or whatever and stuff like that. That stuff, it stops all of that. It, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> what, do, what do you mean you don't get horny anymore? Well, when I was taking those spiralactones, uh -huh. it kind of breaks down your, you know, your level of... Urge, whatever. Yeah, it, okay. it breaks down your testosterone level. So okay. I remember when I was taking them really strong, like, I was so... I'm like, okay, it's like, it's, it's dead weight. <laughs> it's like, you know, it was like I wasn't horny, but I was doing it because I wanted to keep feminine. And then I eventually stopped taking those pills because I was you, like, you know, uh -huh. I got to ask you, even from the shots or or, or even the pills, what, what are some of the side effects? I would say some of the side effects, if you, you know, take too much of it, it can damage your liver. That's what I was told. If you do too much. You have to space it out, you know, with the pills, it works slower with the shots. It's faster because it's it's a liquid form going straight into your bloodstream. Uh -huh. So that's why I was always doing the shots. But when I couldn't get shots, like if I couldn't go up north to get my shots. I would just simply take like four or five pills a day to try to equal up to it. Every day? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so is, is, are these things that you're getting off the black market, or is this at this point does does insurance pay for this? Yeah, I was still paying for it from like my older trans moms. I used to call them my trans moms, so I would get them for that. They would sell me the pills and all that. So I mean, one time I may gave her a hundred dollars, and she gave me like fifty pills, two shots, you know. So I won't have to come back next week. It can hold me, you know. I okay, so in general, in general, does insurance pay for? Yeah, now it does. Needs? It now, does now. Yeah, yeah if okay. you have insurance, it'll pay for your hormone therapy. You just, you just have, you may have to just maybe pay like twenty bucks or something. But hormones, like for the shots by itself, is like a hundred dollars a bottle. You know. So okay, so so I'm gonna ask you a question, um, and I don't even know how to ask this. Um, but feel free if, if you're uncomfortable as answering. But are, are you fully transitioned? 
I am pre-op. Okay. Pre-op means no, means before surgery. Okay. So I, I am not post-op. I, is there is there a reason? Because well, you seem very comfortable. There's a few reasons. There's a few reasons why I am still pre-op. I'm still pre-op because I actually I'm not really sure if I want to go all the way through yet because it's just been a lot of stuff that I seen and heard from people that are post. So I kind of want to give it a little more time. And I'm very comfortable with who I am. So so many people know that I'm trans right now. So it's like, um, why not? Why do I have to get it now? You know, most people, most trans women that get the whole surgery are those that aren't really open. They don't really want their business out. So they want to become that woman, live that life as a woman. And it's whoever knows is probably who they are dealing with at you know, personally, but other than that, I know a few trans women that are post op that work in strip clubs and you wouldn't even know. Okay. So stop, stop there because that was another place I, I needed to go in this conversation. Mm-hmm. When you're post op, how legit uh, is the anatomy? Would, would, would anybody be able to tell? I would say the from the naked eye, from a man naked eye, no. You wouldn't because they do so good with it now. I think the only way that someone would know what it is if it's actually a female herself, like a female looking at it, a female probably might could tell that something is different. Have have you but, ever personally seen someone mm, who I've seen, up? Mm-hmm. Yes, I have. It looks very, very identical, almost. Only thing that I can say that I noticed is that it's, um, it's kind of like, mm, I kind of say it's kind of like small. It looks kind of small, and it looks like kind of like a teenage type of vagina. But I can say that. Um, from my other friends, hers, it it didn't look like it was very deep or or you know, it you know, it looked like she had to because you have to dilate to keep it open, to keep it depth the depth of it. So they have to dilate and then sometimes you only have six inches of dilation. So that is another thing. If you do your dilation really good, then I think that determines on how deep you're gonna be. But my friend said that dilation hurts really bad. Okay, like this, is your, this is a friend who's post-op. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and your friend who, go, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I was just saying, because basically when you're dilating, it's like you're keeping the hole open. Because if you, right when you get the sex change, basically if you don't dilate, it'll close up. Because it's an open wound. You get it? Yes. Got it. Got it. Um, After post, if you will, um, does it behave like a vagina in the sense that these women can have an intimate relationship with their partner? Mm -hmm. I think that one thing that my friend let me know, she said she still has to probably use Uh lube. She has to use lube for it. Um, but other than that, you know, anybody could use lube, you know, some girls' vaginas are dry. <laughs> so it's like, to be honest, I don't think you would be able to tell unless you just want to really um, examine and go in and see what's going on. But I think most of foremost, no, you can't really tell the difference, especially nowadays. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.